Greetings my fellow Terrans, welcome to the channel. I hope you guys are all safe and well and thank you for joining me on this episode where we have a rollie on our bench which looks like it's been up Christopher Walken's where the sun don't shine. And here's what's coming up in this episode. Now boys, this was your daddy's watch. He died of dysentery. So, son, I hid this hunk of metal up my <laughs> for four years. And now, Butch, I give this watch to you. So today we have this Rolex reference 4499 from the World War II era, believed to be one of the first Air King models released by Rolex. Now, Rolex was still a relatively young company at this stage, as it was only founded in 1905 by Hans Wilsdorf in London. So it houses this borrowed movement called the 10.5 Hunter, which has its origins in the 1920s and related to companies such as Aiglia, Gruen and even Alpina. I think this movement was developed by Hermann Aglia in the 20s from the Hunter pocket watch movement. Now, when Rolex was founded back in 1905 by Hans Wilsdorf and Alfred Davis, all they did was import movements from Aiglia in Switzerland to London. They then has these movements in cases produced by companies such as Denison and others. And then they sold these watches to jewelers who put their own names on the dials. And even their own watches were branded with W and D for Wulsdorf and Davis. So it makes sense that Rolex would eventually own this movement and use it in their watches in the 40s. And eventually they would come up with the word Rolex which was a made-up word. And all words are made up, like Nevedelia, Nidavilia. And so, back to this piece in front of us, which has a few issues. As you can see, the movement is quite dirty and not currently functioning. The crown pendant tube has also snapped in half and the threaded part is stuck inside the case. The crystal is cracked and the case is showing its previous battle scars but most notably is this dial it looks like a speckled duck's egg now restoring rolex can be a very polarizing subject especially when it comes to restoring the dial rolex watches seem to be more valuable and more prized by collectors the more battered they are as long as everything is still original so i have to be quite careful on how i approach this restoration but on this watch, I can see that the case has already previously been polished. The crystal is obviously cracked and will need replacing. The movement will require good servicing and oiling. And the dial looks like it has been relumed previously. But I think we can all agree, the dial is quite ugly in its current state. I mean, it's had a very tough journey, very dark. Now, there are some people who like to put things away as family heirlooms, uh, as collectibles, and I totally get that. Just as Butch's great-granddaddy passed it on to his granddad, who passed it on to his dad, who passed it on to him. But there are others who like to enjoy these items on a regular basis. And so what I've decided to do in this case is to source an alternative dial and then keep the original dial as it is. And so the watch can be enjoyed with a nice clean dial and the original dial can be reinstalled at any time for collecting purposes. And the way Christopher Walken looked at it, this was somebody's birthright. He'd be damned if somebody put their greasy hands on this original dial. Okay, I think you need to stop that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Rolex was still a relatively young company at this stage. And so everything was still done a little bit ad hoc, which is quite evident on this movement. This movement would have had an original Aglia serial number 
and all Rolex did was cross it out and put their own serial number on there. I did pose this question in one of my community posts and some of my very clever subscribers pointed this fact out to me that it may have just been crossed out by Rolex so that they can put their own serial number on there. So I'll just disassemble the movement, inspect all the parts, give it a good clean and then reassemble it with some lubrication. As you can see, the movement is absolutely filthy. And now the cannon pinion is attached directly to the center wheel. So I'll just remove this first so it will be easier for the center wheel to come out later on. So as you can see on the ratchet wheel, it says 15 rubies, which means that this is a 15 joule version. And a lot of you have asked me in my previous videos what the exact function of these jewels are. So if you try and imagine all the moving parts, the wheels and pinions, they all sit on pivots and these pivots have to rest inside the top and bottom plates. Now, before the use of rubies, it just used to be metal against metal. And as you can appreciate, metal against metal causes a lot of friction and a lot of wear. And so these jewels, which are actually synthetic rubies, act as bearings and so these jewels are very smooth they cause less friction and less wear on the metal parts and they also act as small oil wells for the lubrication to sit and the use of these jewels has enabled watches to become more accurate and more durable
so now we can see why the watch wasn't working correctly the hook on the end of the spring has broken off i can also hazard a guess by looking at the excessive wear on the mainspring barrel that the previous mainspring may have been the incorrect width and after measuring the width of this mainspring it measured at 1.55 millimeters and all the parts and parts catalogues do not have this particular mainspring listed for this movement. And for those of you who are interested, there is a formula in the Best Fit catalog, which you can also find online, which has a formula for working out the correct mainspring for your particular barrel size. So here all the parts are laid out, ready to go in the wash. So the pendant tube for the screw down crown has snapped off and the threaded part is stuck inside the case. So I'm just gently shaving it out using my ball drill. So after the parts have come out of the cleaning machine, you can see that some of the parts look almost moldy. Some of the other parts have a lot of wear, which I'm not too fussed about and I'm not going to try and restore that. But it's just the parts that look like they have some sort of mold or staining on them that I want to address. And here you can see the excessive wear to the rhodium plating on the mainspring barrel due to the mainspring being too wide and rubbing against it. There seems to be an inscription on this bridge which says 1534. I wonder if that was Rolex or if that was the previous watchmaker who serviced this watch. So I've borrowed somebody's electric toothbrush. I'm not going to say whose it is. They may be watching this video. I'm only kidding. This is a spare old toothbrush. It doesn't belong to the accountant. And you may be asking why I'm using toothpaste and charcoal. Your guess is good as mine. But some do say that you can see my teeth glowing from the dark side of the moon. It seems much better. The stains have gone and it's only the wear and fading that remains. And yes, this is a Ferrero Rocher chocolate tray. Uh, Monsieur, with this Ferrero Rocher, you are really spoiling us. It's the ambassador's choice. And once I've finished with this brushing process, the parts will go in an ultrasonic machine. Then I will do some pegging, and then they will go back into the watch cleaning machine.
You can watch me renew the stage mode. Oh, stage mode. Let me put this on. Oh, let put this on. Oh. So these are the results after the first and second cutting stage and all that remains is for me to give it a final buff to get rid of any fine scratches or minor swells. So I've managed to source another mainspring which according to my calculations should fit our barrel. Mm. For those of you who are interested in servicing and oiling this movement, you can see that this is a manual wind mainspring and therefore we do not need to oil the inner part of the barrel wall. On an automatic mainspring you would apply some braking grease to the inner part of the barrel wall to allow the mainspring to slip as it constantly winds in an automatic watch. I was unable to find an oil chart for this particular movement and in my previous Jeja Lakutra video I have provided a basic outline on what oils to use and where to use them if you don't have an oil chart for a particular vintage movement. So please refer back to that if you need a guide on how to oil this particular movement. And I'll leave the rest of this segment in silence so you can enjoy the ASMR.
right, so this is the bit you've all been waiting for. I have some very special dials in here for a Breitling. Loads of Tudor dials. Got Frank Muller dials. Right. What's this one? Okay, guys, so you can see amongst all these special dials, I have these really, really. Look at that. Patek Philippe. And within that Patek Philippe, I have these very, very rare dials. Ooh. So I'm going to use one of these dials. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll use this one. I did say they were rare. I mean, where else are you going to get one of these dials from? These dials were handcrafted by our resident watchmaker's apprentice, aka Trouble. Gerard Genta, eat your heart out. Now these special dials are so special, they don't have any dial feet. So I'll just be using these dial dots to secure the special dial to the movement. Voila! Looks fabulous. I know what you're all thinking while you're sitting there with your hand over your mouth. What a brilliant idea and what an amazing dial. However, on those days where you're not feeling very funky and very adventurous and you want to go for something a bit more conservative, I also have this alternative. So as for this vintage dial, I don't have much information on this dial, which era it's from, which model it's for, but I ordered it because it was the correct diameter and the dial feet were also in the correct place. And now I'm putting away the original dial in a very dark place. Now I have managed to source two tubes for this case and the standard sizes seem to be 2.5 millimeters and three millimeters there doesn't seem to be anything else in between so the 2.5 millimeter tube is too small for the case and the three millimeter tube is too big so i'm having to re-tap the thread on the case and hopefully the three millimeter tube should fit I'm nearly done here folks and while I finish off some of you have been trying to message me through Instagram. I opened up my Instagram page many years ago but I stopped using it and don't go on it that often as it scares the life out of me. Every time I go on there I see young people or more like young kids shaking their bodies uncontrollably as if they're having some sort of epileptic fit. I thought we had advanced medication for this type of condition. And they're all wearing leggings. They're all wearing bloody leggings. My kid used to wear leggings over their nappies. Don't they make normal clothes anymore? 
But if you do want to follow me on Instagram, then I'll try and get a bit more active on there. And I hope you don't mind me sharing my thoughts with you. And the reason for me sharing my thoughts is because I also have a young daughter who's on the cusp of becoming a teenager. So she's still a tweeny. I think it's the natural instinct of every father who has a little girl to try and not only protect his own little girl, but everybody else's when he sees them in danger. And personally, I see this current fad as a bigger danger and a bigger threat than the pandemic that we are facing. And so there you have it folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope I've managed to provide you with a bit of escapement and some light entertainment during these forever crazy times. I also hope I've managed to provide an alternative solution for those of you who love to collect things but would like to enjoy them at the same time without the fear of ruining them or ruin their originality. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all the lovely comments that you leave. And if you would like to show your support, then why not become part of the Naked Watchmaker family by subscribing and liking the videos and sharing it with your friends and family. I also have a Patreon page if you would like to support the channel and I also have an Instagram page. And so my message is for any of you young people that may be watching today. You don't need to seek approval from the whole world. You don't need to show all your beauties to complete strangers that you've never met before in your life. And stop wearing leggings. Please buy some proper clothes. Now to some of you, the original dial on this Rolex may have been beautiful and to others, this current dial may be beautiful. It's all subjective, but true beauty never requires any attention. So what I'm trying to say is, everyone is beautiful in their own ways to the ones that are near and dear to them. So you don't need approval from the whole planet and from complete strangers on Instagram and TikTok and anything else. Stay safe folks, look after yourselves and look after one another. And if the almighty wills, I'll see you on the next one. Ta-ra! Yeah.